Welcome to How to Kill an Hour. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. Before we crack on with today's show, you can find out about everything we like to kill time with. You can listen to the podcast. You can watch videos of us killing time in the most ridiculous ways ever, all by going to howtokillanhour.com. Right, now you remember that. Let's crack on with the show. I am Optimus Prime, sending all messages to Autobots out there. We are here, listening to How to Kill an Hour. Are you serious? This is How to Kill an Hour. I'm Marcus Bronzy. And I'm Julia Hardy. Welcome to the show, Julia. How are you doing? I am enjoying the coldness of this room because it is scorching outside. As we speak, as we record this podcast, today is the 7th of August, 2018. It feels like we're on week five of the heat wave that the UK has experienced. (laughs) We're so not cut out for it at all. Like every, everything's come to like a standstill. Everyone's melted about two weeks ago. There's two types of people when it comes to this sort of weather. There's the people that embrace it and there's the people that hate it. Yeah. Where are you right now at week five? You know, I'm actually, I'm all right. I like a bit of sun um, and I kind of, I like missed a little bit of it over the past five weeks because I've been in America a couple of times and that's like, you know, roaringly hot. But then there's AC everywhere. So you go from like AC car to AC you know frozen yogurt place i mean i don't know where you're going to go but mainly generally everything's got ac involved yeah. in it i love the fact that you, you de- can definitely tell you've been over in the states a lot because you're calling it ac because over here people are like what when i say ac i'm like air, co- air conditioning they're like oh wh- why don't you just say that mate I'm like, uh, but you ac know, man but it's such a long word okay so here's my other thing about words where you don't ever really say the uh, the right thing so you know vietnamese pho right it's not called pho that's not his oh. name. It's just spelt pho, right? When you read it out loud, it's actually called like pho. But if you say pho at anyone, you're like, do you want to go get some pho? They're like, what are you talking about? So there's no point. Some you far. just You just have to go, you have to call it pho because otherwise nobody knows what you mean. If you say pho, it sounds like you finished the word ah before it's like, it sounds like you've ended the word before you finish saying it. Like, should we go and get some pho uh, and chips? T- yeah. Some pho. Uh, yeah. Or like, you're having like a moment where your brain has just like... Shut st- down. It st- started like... Uh, oh, what? <laughs> Let me just reset. Yeah. So it's far. It's like, yeah, far. It's yeah. never going to catch on. No, because it's spelled pho. <laughs> so it's just not going to work. Right. So, Julia Hardy, for those that don't know, tell us who you are. We know who you are. What you're about, though. Wow, this is very rather existential all of a sudden. <laughs> my God, did my parents set you up to this? Mm. Uh, no. Uh, so um, I'm a... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm hot when I go outside. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I got um, So I'm a presenter uh, and mainly I do, uh, you know, video stuff or online stuff, live stuff, uh, anything really to do with kind of gaming and tech, although I kind of, I do other things outside of that, but like my bread and butter is uh, Radio 1. I am their gaming presenter, so I do a monthly gaming show for them called, you know, The Gaming Show, which makes it really, really easy to search on iPlayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go on the radio, obviously, and talk about the latest games for them too. But then also that, I'll do like a bunch of other hosting stuff, just depending on what it is. So I'll be going out to Gamescom, and I'm also going to be doing some stuff for this uh, KSI and uh, Logan Paul fight that's coming up, which should be very interesting and neat. Awesome. That brings us on to the part of the show that we call our killer bit, where we like to talk about how we kill a bit of time. We've got a game that we're about to speak about, and I'd love to speak more about what you're doing and what you have done. But we've got to talk about this fight, Julia. We, I mean, we kind of do. It is... Wow. Okay, so... For someone who, I mean, you know, doing kind of gaming and doing sort of stuff online, I've known a lot of these kind of gaming YouTubers for many, many years now. So I've kind of seen them all like grow and just, you know, it's it's astounding sort of like, you know, how much they've kind of grown in popularity. I mean, not really, but just it's just the level that it's kind of changed and shifted like over the past few years. So, um. KSI and his sidemen, KSI and his sidemen do this uh, charity football match every year, and they have like it's the sidemen versus YouTube all stars. So they have like Joe Sugg or like Alfie Days, that kind of thing. And they've been doing this for like a few years, and that was kind of sort of made sense, you know, charity football matches. Normal celebrities kind of you know go off and do that, and they raise like a bunch of money for charity, which is really really great. And they'd like bring me in to kind of do the live stream for that, and then all of a sudden it kind of just took this like weird turn where. Um, <laughs> It, they've somehow got into boxing basically <laughs> so um it all started um with a, another youtuber and uh, joe weller basically you know looking off against each other and they were going to do this sort of fight and it was all like a bit of a joke and they did that 
And then basically under the comments of that, uh, under Theo Baker's uh, Instagram, KSI basically said, oh, I'll fight the winner. It's like a joke. It was like a throwaway joke comment. And then basically Joe Weller won. And he was like, right, well, I'm fighting Joe Weller then. So then that obviously happened. Uh, he won that. And then at the end of that particular match, he basically called out the Pauls, uh, Jake and Logan Paul, and was like, oh, I'm going to fight anyone whose surname is Paul. And then that's how we've got to here, which it's going to be one of the biggest sporting events, I think, actually ever. And it's not even like an amateur match. It's just going to be a, the biggest boxing match ever in terms of views. And I think it's going to be the, the largest, well, they said the largest amateur sporting event ever, but I don't know. They keep changing it because the numbers keep going up. So, I mean, it's, it's, for me, it just really feels like, where do we go from here? You've, do, okay, you remember the old MTV show Celebrity De Deathmatch, which was like this stop animation show where it'd be like Britney Spears, like a clay model Britney Spears yeah, fighting yeah. Christina Aguilera or something, right? Yeah. And we all watched it and we're like, ha, 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 that's really silly. Isn't it crazy that celebrities actually got in the ring and fought each other, even though it's plasticine? That's so out there. That's never going to happen, ever. Right? And now this is basically what's happened. Like, we all know that we're only like, I don't know, two Simon Cowell ITV shows away from, like, <laughs> fighting to the death or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. late night, ITV late night. Britain's got fighters Yeah, well, on I mean, today's show. They've got um, Escape from the Hounds or whatever it's called. What's it? Um, Release the Release Hounds. Release the Hounds. That's the one. And that's celebrities basically being chased by dogs. So, I really have not watched that show. If that's what it is, yeah. I'm going to go online and watch the rest of it. So it's celebrities being chased, chased by, by dogs. dogs. Yeah. Um, awesome. There was an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie called The Running Man. Which yes. Is, right, okay. Classic. Amazing. Which was basically, if you haven't seen it, it's like Gladiator, except they kill everybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like Jet or Wolf, but yeah. just they literally beat someone to death. Anyway, um, so there's a fake show within that movie. There's a fake TV show that's called Climbing for Dollars, which is this person basically climbing up a rope, collecting money whilst dogs basically bay underneath and then eat them. And when they first started talking about Release the Hounds, I was like, I really feel like I've seen this show before. So we're living in the future that was predicted in these kind of weird sci-fi films and you're looking at this kind of future world where yeah. things just become so ridiculous, but we can see them normally. But the biggest sporting event ever this is looking like it's going to be and it's showing the power of youtubers yeah. and 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 sort of the crowds that they can bring but let's talk about more about how you fit in within this so like where is julia hardy going to sit within this whole environment well okay so they've got an incredible roster of people involved in this so we've got a guy called the true geordie uh, and Lozcast who basically would comment over their football match their charity football matches joe weller is stepping into the commentary booth. So Isn't that the guy you just said yes, got beaten up yes, by KSI? Yes. So it's going to be very interesting. This is quite a shocking thing that happened. They were like, but wait a minute, he's not going to hold back. But then that's, you know, kind of the point. He can, you know, talk about actually what it's like to face KSI in a in a boxing ring. So as the punch is connecting, you can say, yeah, I know exactly how that feels. Ooh, that was about that a three. <laughs> that's a four. Oh, that one made me back twinge or something i don't know so that's really so they, these guys are going to be doing the casting then we've got uh, michael buffer who invented let's get ready to rumble i can't believe you did that in time that's amazing <laughs> you're just waiting the whole time for me to do that you know what we've got all a manner of things on tap <laughs> and i was just like that had to come in right let's okay. give it a big one go on okay, let's get ready. julia hardy i'm going to move a little bit away from the mic because my voice is too loud are you ready let's Oh, wow, that's really loud. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> let me just let me just pull my mouth back a bit from the right. Okay, ready? Let's get ready to rumble! See? Wasted. Wasted <laughs> doing other stuff. Um, so, yeah, right. that guy. And then you've got uh, Shannon Briggs mm -hmm. and... Oh, God, what's the other guy's name? Um, Johnny Nelson. That's it, yeah. Uh, so there's all of these... So you're going to be surrounded by some boxing legends, by the way. Yes. So basically, I'm going to be in a kind of ringside studio uh, with myself and uh, Shannon and Johnny. And obviously, we'll be kind of bringing on uh, some of the undercards as they go uh, and chatting to them and also just talking to them. You know, these guys know how to box. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we obviously want to be breaking down some of the more kind of technical elements of the fight. Cause it isn't just, oh, getting there and... Hit, yeah. hit someone you, know, you really it's like chess it's like mental chess you've got to work out your opponent like know when to go hard when to sort of pull back you know it's yeah plus like, exhausting I did um, I was actually trying a little bit of sparring with KSI once it was uh, it was quite a sweaty affair people don't realise how much of your body you use when boxing like when you watch boxing you think it's just oh, it's just throwing your arms around but it's yeah. a very 
it's it's a total sport, isn't it? Your whole body movement. It's okay is for someone. Okay, I would like to think that I'm fairly fit. I go to the gym, like you know, most of the week. Doing two minutes of boxing absolutely Insane. ruined me for about three days. Insane. Yeah, Insane. like your your forearms. You're like, why do my forearms hurt? I can't understand why there's an ache here. Why would there be an <laughs> ache here? It makes no sense. But yeah, so there's this incredible roster of people involved. It's going to be this huge, huge thing. Uh, it's like a pay-per-view event. So we're going to pay to kind of stream and watch it online. I don't know, man. It's It just kind of opens up a whole kind of, not can of worms, because I don't think it's necessarily like a, a, a bad thing, but it does mean that things are moving in a very different way direction you know like where do we go from here like are we going to start seeing entire youtuber you know golf the, the youtuber open i don't know is that if, i happen? mean i think in in a few years that could happen when they get older but you know we've got ufc yes we could have like and we have different belts there's like the wbc IV, whatever championship belts <laughs> so you could have the youtube championship different weight classes of youtubers fighting each other i guess like i know is boxing actually more dangerous than... Isn't there some weird statistic that, like, boxing is more dangerous than, like, MMA or something like that? Like, it has more, like, long-term damage. I feel like we're going down a bit of a rabbit hole here. But I, I do worry about UFC because that does look brutal. Some of the stuff I have seen happen to people's faces in the <laughs> UFC ring. But yeah, yeah, it's like... I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of blood sports, but... But I like to think I can watch a boxing match. But sometimes in UFC, some of the connections no, and when you see the replay, I'm like, no. yeah, that's that's dangerous, man. But that's also, dangerous. if you're a YouTuber, man, that's your money maker. It's your face, yeah. That's your face. Like you can't have Alfie Day's, you know, wreck his nose. What's going to happen to his vlogs? Mm, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to be in the mix, right? Yeah. You're going to be following the fight. You're going to be in one of the most unique sporting environments. Ever. It's so weird because it's it's YouTube, but it's sport. So I've ended up like basically running, hosting a studio for a sporting event, even though like sport isn't really particularly my thing. But it's fascinating. It's really like what a great job to well, do. Ho hopefully your ignorance, and I mean that in a nice way of the sport, will help to kind of bring in people who aren't fans of boxing. Like, that's I kind of, yeah, that's kind of like I like to sort of think I kind of. I sort of sit on the fence with a lot of the jobs that I do in that, you know, I'll host a lot of stuff with esports and obviously I understand how the games themselves work. But like with most esports, to really understand it takes a lifetime and you have yeah. to be really dedicated to that one particular sport. So stuff I've done with like BBC Three, I'm literally there to extrapolate um, the kind of finer nuances of, you know, from people who really know what's happening. Like we did um, this Dota 2 final uh, recently and some of the casters and stuff were there who were casting over the matches and I was like, how bad actually is death in Dota? Which is a really straightforward question, but actually has about 20 different answers depending <laughs> on the situation. So, you know, there's, it's, it's complicated. A lot of things are very complicated, but, you know, my job is to kind of ask the really stupid questions to make sure everyone at home can then, you know, jo come along and sort of, you know, enjoy the ride as it happens. Awesome. So you've done some boxing. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be watching this very unique YouTube slash sort of sporting event who do you think is going to win? You feel, be, you're fully entitled to sit on the fence as a commentator, but I mean, what do you think is going to happen? I've got to ask you at least. Yeah, so I mean, the thing is, I haven't seen anything of Logan Paul's training, and he is he's taller than he's taller than JJ than KSI, but KSI's been training a bit longer because obviously he had like the Joe Weller fight before. Okay, he's very serious about it. He's got like this whole team of you know people who are with him who are training him. And he's like quite clearly quite dedicated. So, I mean, off the fact that I've actually seen the effort that he's put in so far, I would say him. But then I have no idea what Logan Paul's doing. I haven't really been following that. But then also I really feel... It. So, here's the thing. Logan Paul isn't really the most liked of people at all. And it is very much this kind of like US versus UK thing. And I'm not the most nationalistic kind of person, but I really feel like, come on, man. UK. Come on, UK, UK. versus US. Let's UK. show them how it's done. Fair enough. Yeah. Give them a good old fifty cuffs. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go put, put your arms up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's the fight. Where will we be able to see it? Is it going to be on one of their YouTube channels? Is it going to be on both their YouTube channels? Where are we going to see this? So basically, it's a pay-per-view event, but they've actually set up a separate joined YouTube channel for it. Because whereas with some of the other fights, they would split it between the two particular people's channels or whatever yeah. so this is a particular channel that's purely just up for the fight so uh, it will be on there 
and if they go through to the uh, potential rematch that might happen in February, which is in their contract. Three fight deal, probably. I wouldn't be surprised. A the trilogy, they call it in sporting. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've only got one that signed into their contract okay. at the moment, but um, it should be interesting if that guy said, but that'll be in the States. But again, it'll be, you know, streamed on that particular channel. It's quite, um, I don't know. I feel like it's like a weird dawn of a new age and I'm not quite sure what's going to happen afterwards you know? exciting times I mean I'm, I'm definitely want to sit down with you afterwards and just talk to you about what the experience was like and and what the energy was like in a in a YouTube boxing match because like I keep saying it's just like the first time this has ever happened so I'm gonna I have so many questions now yeah. I'm gonna have so many questions afterwards about yeah. like where you think this is gonna go well if there's anything like the Joe Weller KSI one all around like all around the ring will just be like a veritable who's who of YouTube stars because that's what it was last time it was amazing it was just like oh yeah watched her vlogs oh, I sick yeah. so like even so the coverage from that is going to be insane as well when you start adding in all of the people that are going to be like vlogging or just doing yeah. Instagram and Twitter I it's think I'm probably going to vlog as well I think it's a bit like yeah, weird, weird opportunity like not to standard. you need to get those snap specs on hack them and just have them live streaming <laughs> the whole day uh, anyway right from boxing, yeah. can we talk about something else that we have been killing time with just before we press record today? Yeah. From, from, from boxing to cooking. Uh, wow. Overcooked 2, we slapped in the PS4. Uh, it's also out on the Nintendo Switch uh, as well. Um, let's talk about Overcooked 2. What is Overcooked 2, Julia? So, okay. Overcooked 2 <laughs> is uh, the next version from the Overcooked, well, franchise. Franchise? Yeah. Is it a fra I suppose well, technically you know what? It McDonald's is has franchises and Burger King does. So I think franchise is a very appropriate word for this. That's Perfect. Fine. So the original Overcooked won like a bunch of BAFTAs as well. And basically, what it is, is a kind of. Uh, a, a multiplayer game where you play with your friends running a kitchen making food and serving it it's very very simple it's like quite a simple premise but actually is breaks friendships somewhat <laughs> so the original Overcooked was just a kind of couch co-op game so you needed to kind of be in the same physical space which but, was a positive and a negative because yeah. fists do fly sometimes fists do fly but also then you have to have like real friends and sometimes <laughs> your friends don't want to you know you could live like in the depths of like South East London and then just not come around your house and then you're especially sad. when you always burn the rice yeah exactly that was, you know, in the game and not in yeah. real life um, yeah, so uh, this one uh, you can play kind of online with friends or with randos if you want and um yeah, up to four players. So basically you're running a kitchen, so you have to do really simple things like, you know, getting some lettuce and then chopping the lettuce and then putting it on a plate, which sounds really simple. But then you add all these other ingredients in and then you have to like cook some rice or do something else. And these orders just, they just don't stop coming in. It's like Tetris. It just doesn't end. And the idea is just it gets faster and faster and faster until you hate all your friends. The best thing I could <laughs> liken it to is if uh, you've been out on a bit of a heavy night and all your mates have stayed around your place, and some idiot has decided that they want you to either cook like a fry up or like a roast, something complicated the next day. And all your friends all decide to pitch in and help but actually just burn down your kitchen. Yeah. And it's each, each like of your friends is in charge of one ingredient. Yeah, you're like, okay, you're that. doing tomatoes because you know what, Stephen, that's it. I'm not trusting <laughs> you with anything with fire. <laughs> yeah. But imagine, again, six or four of your friends all in a small kitchen trying to move around each other with pots and pans. That, that's basically the overcooked experience, which is hilarious, but also you might, yeah, totally fall out at the end. Definitely. I mean, there is a story in there as well, but I've got to be honest, I just wanted to whack it on and play straight away. Like, I don't know why they, they just have this compelling need to create some sort of story around why you're doing something. It's just like, no, I just yeah. want to play the game. Let's, Nintendo let's does that sense. a lot. You're like, yeah. it's just, it's great gameplay. It's a great game. That's great. It's okay. Just be, just be happy. Let's get straight just be to happy it, with man. that. Yeah, I don't, I, don't need to, yeah. I don't need motivation to do that. I've put it in. Definitely. I've turned it on. Definitely. Is that not enough motivation for you? <laughs> like I bought it. What right. would you want? One thing I did really like about this that they've added to the game, the multiplayer is amazing online as well, which means you can shout at people far away. And that means if you're really bad at cooking like myself, you can always find new friends who don't know how bad you are until they play with you. Uh, but another thing I really liked was the throw in it. The fact that you can throw ingredients, right? It sounds like <laughs> such a small thing, but the fact that I can get a lettuce or a cucumber as I kept on throwing at you I it was, you can just throw stuff at each other it's sick okay it's it's good and it does speed up the kitchen but ultimately you're just going to end up like trolling your mates be like nah and just throwing <laughs> tomatoes at them and you're like nah yeah um, it's good but then also like in some of the later levels the kitchens get really weird like some are like on airships and stuff yeah. so you actually have to throw ingredients over like a giant 
gap. You're like, this just does not seem like a hygienic kitchen at all. I, well, you know what? I'm glad that uh, you don't lose any points for lettuce hitting the floor and stuff like that because we would have made a right? fluff salad. It would just mean salad, if which was, is 90% fluff and 1% lettuce. If there was anyone from health and safety inspecting our kitchen, there was a lot of ingredients on the floor, but they didn't yeah. seem really that bothered. So no, I was one like, minded. All right. no one minded. Although there were some people kind of peering in the kitchen, which was a bit off-putting. It was like, well, look, I need to leave these things on the floor. Can you not look at me while I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need your judgy eyes. So I like dust off your lettuce. Yeah. Shut up and eat it. Exactly. I'm glad you got something. Exactly. And plus, can you just get out of the way? Because I need to get a plate. Bruh. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. So it sounds like a really simple game. And, and whenever I explain Overcooked to people, I say, look, the fact it's so simple, but so, I don't know, it just fills you with so much energy when you're playing it is an amazing thing. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to give it a thumbs up here at How to Kill an Hour. Sometimes we do a numbering system, one to five. I mean, I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five. I think it loses one and a half uh, stars for me personally because. I'm not a very good cook and it, it exposes my bad the cookery. Game. You can't blame the game for your shortcomings as a human. That's Damn. not fair. You Damn. can't deduct a point and a half because you're a terrible person. So they, what, what were they going to ever do with that? Like, how can they fix that? How can they make the game better without changing you? Okay, right. You I tr- can't... try to blame my bad cooking on the game, but um, okay. Come on, man. Fine. It's a solid game. All right, yeah, no, I'll give it a solid four. Uh, I don't like to give out fives too easily. I just feel like I want another Overcooked. I want the trilogy. So uh, I want well, them to have room to make more. Um, but what could they add? They could add a uh, VR um, version to it. Billy said they can add a VR version to the game. I don't know. I, think I don't know nice. if I really want like him throwing tomatoes at me in VR if I can. Okay, <laughs> fine. Right, we won't do that. Right, okay, right. So anyway, out of five, we usually have a scoring system out of five. What would you like to give out of five, Julia? I'd I'll like to hand this over to you. Okay, four and a half out of five because okay. I don't want to give a five, but it's a really solid game, totally works, is unbelievably fun and super addictive and all they've done is just kind of like tweak it a bit and make it even better Better, it's better, better, it's better, 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 yeah. All mm-hmm. right, cool. Well, I'm going to second that for four and a half out of five. Okay. I think it's fairer than just giving it a three and a half out of five because you're a bad cook. Yeah, I'm a bad cook. Yeah. Um. Right. So that's our killer bit for this week. Now, Julia, I'd like to talk about you, a female broadcaster yeah. who specialises yes. in get you are. She checked. <laughs> I was like, she just yep. she just double checked. Yep. Um, just make sure. What's it like, man? <laughs> Gotta be honest with you, it's all right, man. What being a female, like, what in game specifically? Yeah, I don't make a big deal out of it, and and I and I and I'm ignorantly thought that in 2018 people don't make a big deal out of it, and I and I used to think, oh, everyone gets treated the same, man, but clearly not. What's it like, man? Be honest. What working in games yeah. specifically? Um, it's a lot better than it was. Like when I first started, it was quite horrendous, and it was very much a thing of. There were certain companies uh, in America who had this tendency of just kind of uh, hiring people who, I don't know, people just got into their head that if you were like a woman in front of camera, like talking about games, you were obviously just like some sort of rando they picked up off the street. And it took every new job that I would have, uh, I'd have to spend like three months getting like abuse online of people being like, what she doesn't know what she's talking about. And you just have to like suck it up and just carry on for a bit and then soon they kind of realize that actually what you're saying is kind of your thoughts yeah it's frustrating and it still goes on now i don't think i don't think i don't think people realize when they're being sexist in some ways i don't think people realize when they're being racist it's like this weird kind of pre-programming this brainwashing that they've had since they were young and because i think it's like a subconscious thing if you if you say to someone, oh, that's really sexist, what are you doing? Or, oh, that's quite racist, what you're doing. And they like, they almost like, they take that moment where they like think about it and they sort of go and they check upstairs and there's like no record of them making a decision, you know, to be racist or to be sexist because it's not a conscious thing. And that's why everyone always comes back with like, oh, no, I wasn't. Oh, it totally yeah. wasn't. Like, of course. But there's yeah. no record. But then, of course, there isn't because it's, it's something you learn from when you're from when you're really really young you've been programmed to sort of think that way so i try not to be too harsh to people when they're being sexist about stuff because it's not fundamentally generally speaking unless they're like an outright misogynist but it's not really their fault and you can kind of show them and try and educate them about the other side of it so i did this blog for a while which was all about that um which was quite fun um and I think that kind of helped in a lot of ways. And it, it also encouraged a lot of other women in games to kind of speak up and stand up. Because there was this whole thing of like, don't feed the trolls, like keep your mouth shut. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but like, sorry, my special power as like a human is to be quiet. It doesn't really, 
I mean, yeah. you know, that sounds like Daredevil on Netflix. Come on now. <laughs> that just sounds a bit rubbish. Like, come on now. Um, His worst enemy. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Creeping Brilliant. into the room. Daredevil can't catch me because I'm so quiet. I don't move. I don't say anything. Um, you know, and I, th- I think like things have kind of shifted and changed. I think like awareness is, is better and awareness is kind of out there. But yeah, it's... um. It's still, it, yeah, it's, it's much better than it was and it is going the right way. But fundamentally, cool. things aren't really equal in any regard still. Cool. I think it's got like one more generation, unfortunately, and then hopefully we'll just stamp that out. There'll be something else that everyone's fucking up with. There'll uh, be like yeah. real aliens from like space yeah. that people get really aggro about instead. But then, you know, that's You fine. know what, at this, at this time in my life, uh, when the world is how it is, I can get down with that kind of racism at the moment. A- what, alien aliens racism. from space? Yeah, I can get, I can get down bring with everyone that. together at least. I can get down with that, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the kind of racism I'm, I'm cool with for the moment. I mean, when they actually land, I'm going to have to reassess it. But, you know, hypothetically they right now... They might be really nice people. Don't be prejudiced and xenophobic. They I can be just, really lovely just, people. <laughs> You're so xenophobic. So... Xenophobic and getting xenomorphs. There you go. Oh, They could all die. <laughs> well to be fair xenomorphs yeah. are dicks yeah they are um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean like they there's are. no other way of describing there's no them. other way nah I would not want to take a xenomorph out for a drink no I'd just be lunch but uh, we even fell into this trap here on how to kill it now I've got to be honest like, so we have like focus sessions and, and conversations about what we can do to make the show better and it, fu- it was a slap in the face when like three times in a row on the same day people were like Where's the females on the show? I was like, fuck. That's sexist. Like, but the thing is, we, you don't notice. You don't but see I it. But I didn't know. Yeah, like, yeah and, until then. And I was like, fuck. Like, where's the, ba- like, where's the balance? Like, we, it, like, it's just like, we need to fix this immediately. So like, and it took so long to realize it. And it still took someone else to mention that. And that was exactly what you mentioned. I didn't realize it wasn't an intentional thing, but I was just like, fuck. But you know, we can rectify that moving forward, I you think, know what I mean? I think, like, for me, the biggest thing is <clears throat> knowing that fundamentally I've been pre-programmed to think certain ways about certain things. And I like to think that I am open to that I might be wrong or I might yeah. look at things in the wrong way. Yeah. And I am happy to be corrected. And yeah. I like to kind of put that vibe out there where it's like, if I, if like, I try and notice how I treat people and if I treat people differently, I try to kind of rectify that. And... If someone comes to me and says something, at least I'll be open to the possibility that that could happen. Yeah. But what really frustrates me is people are like, no, I'm not. I'm not sexist. I'm not racist. I'm not anything. I'm not. I'm just, I'm a nice guy. And like, it's like people who have that kind of blinker, blinkered view are the ones that are sometimes like the biggest problem because surely you've got to be open to, okay, as women, we've kind of had this thing where we sort of speak up about if something's a bit sexist or we get talk, talked over in like, you know, if we're in an office environment and things like that. And one of the most annoying things isn't the fact that it happens. It's that every time we'd ever bring it up, Evan would be like, you're just imagining it. And you're like, oh, my God. Mm. Like, honestly, entire swathes of women were like, are we being insane? Mm. Like, maybe we are because everyone would be like, no, just being sensitive. And you're like, maybe we are because everyone keeps telling us we are, you know. Mm. But it's that thing of feeling like you're crazy when you've noticed something. And then everyone else is like, nah, that's not happening. You're like, oh, God, what? But now it's kind of. Now that there's a lot more kind of like openness about it and kind of women, you know, kind of come together and talk about these things that you realize that, OK, I'm actually not mad. Most other women have experienced this. So actually, we're not crazy. And I don't think it was intentional to try and make women feel crazy. It's just that men had never really noticed it. Well, it's hard, I can't. It's harder for me to imagine things from a woman's point of view because I'm not a woman. Yeah, Do you know that, what I mean? Why, why would so, you know that? So why would you is, know yeah, that? Yeah, but it's understanding. I'm fine. It's understanding that I'm ignorant in that area and and trying to remind myself that I don't understand it but being open is what helps me. to like and, and just listening like women don't want to bring up things to be difficult or make anyone feel terrible you know generally speaking if we bring something up it's because it's a problem you mm. know and it's something that we've noticed but then to be met with nah you're just imagining that it's not cool. can you imagine like that think about how angry a woman was to start with and then multiply that by 20. Yeah, I'm not fucking with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was actually really upset about that. And now they've said that I'm lying. Nah. Oh, my God. Oh, nah, so I'll, I'll, pa- I'll pass on that, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. 
But things are getting better in the gaming industry, though, for you, yeah? Like, that's what definitely, I'm definitely. That, I just, well, I think it's getting better all round. I think it's, you know, uh, everyone's a bit more aware of, like, the issues and what needs to kind of be rectified. And that's not just gaming, that's, that's everywhere. So we're moving okay. in the right direction. I mean, slowly, but we are moving in the right direction. So. Definitely. Speaking about moving in the right direction, Radio One Gaming Show. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that, man. Like, first, you know, let's just re explain to the listener what that is, what you can expect from it. And then I want to talk about how you got into it. Okay. And before we leave today, let's not forget to talk about those bad boy trainers. Right? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll come back to those. Got some good can't, can't ignore those. They are like lighting up well, the room a little bit. I mean, you can't. They're bright red. <laughs> um, so um, the gaming show is, uh, the best way of describing it is kind of like TV that goes straight onto iPlayer, basically. Yep. So it goes out on the Radio 1 channel. It's called the gaming show. And every month we pick like a different subject. So it could be anything from, let's think, um, Last time we did, and we did one about Sega, actually, about nostalgia and Sega and why people are obsessed with playing old games. Uh, we did one about Fortnite, because obviously Fortnite was kind of blowing up. And another one we did, we went to Seoul, actually, to talk to Brendan Green, who's like the player unknown from Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Been to Japan, we go to E3 quite a lot. Um, you know, uh, all different kind of stuff, really. It's mainly kind of subject focused stuff because it's monthly. So, yeah, um, it's been going for, ooh, like just over two years now. But wow. every, excuse me, I'm going to make a really weird sound in my voice. Excuse me. Um, it's been going for about two years now. Um, but it's one of those things where people are kind of like more sort of stumbling upon it a little bit. Like, oh, you're doing that new gaming show. I was like, <laughs> really new. But yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's great that Radio 1 are, you know, they're really keen to, and they understand that gaming is very, very popular for the Radio 1 demographic. So, um, yeah, I'm just like really happy to be kind of part of the team and sort of bringing that extra little extra little kind of facet to uh, the radio on arsenal nice and what can we expect from future gaming shows what can what juice can you give us um well we haven't we're having a discussion at the moment about what the next show is going to be and i don't know whether i'm allowed to tell you what it is yet or not because it's still being kind of fine-tuned we tend to we have Obviously, because it's Radio 1, we tend to talk about like the, the biggest games because that's the kind of core, kind of casual audience that's Radio 1. You know, things like yeah. FIFA, Call of Duty, like stuff like that. There are certain games that are coming out that I really like. Cyberpunk, personally, from the guys who made The Witcher. I saw some of that at E3. I mean, I'd already been harassing them via email before that because I was like, I just want to do a show about this game. I just want to do a show about this game. So we are kind of, at the moment, talking to them about how that's potentially going to happen that would be amazing because you know cd project red take a lot of pride in what they do and anyone who's played the witcher it was one of the most perfect video games i think i've ever played like i could i could barely you know i could barely like muster up any vague complaint about it which is unusual because i like to moan about video games. <laughs> um I absolutely loved it. So, you know, them kind of going into this sort of cyberpunk world could be the greatest game ever. I'm trying not to get too overhyped because it's very easy to get overhyped in games. But, um, yeah. I don't know if anyone that was at E3 that I've spoken to Who has didn't bring not up. just absolutely lost their shit about that game. It's just everybody loves Blade Runner, right? Right. There's something wrong with you if you don't like Blade Runner. Who doesn't want to be in like a future city where you've got like amazing technology, but you can also get like some really dirty noodles and dumplings on the side of a street? Like I don't, <laughs> and I don't. Some, don't, far. some yeah, dirty far. Some, some dirty far. Dirty far. Dirty far. Um, you know, I think everyone kind of loves that sort of aesthetic, and just think about the kind of role play capabilities of being in that world where like augmentations and things like that are happening, and the world looked incredible. I actually interviewed one of the guys. And we're walking, there's a bit where they're sort of walking through the street and just the fashion on um, the people within the game. And I said to him, dude, like, you, if you're going to make merch, that like little crop biker jacket that girl was wearing in that bit, which is what I was like, I would straight, I would wear that whole outfit. Like, it looks sick. And he was like, oh, well, you know, we have like our, you know, designers who design characters, but actually we hired like a bunch of like fashion designers to like come in and help us like design the clothes. And I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Like, it's so funny, like, <laughs> thinking about like any job that you could possibly want and there's a job in video games yeah you could be a fashion designer but in video games that's just, I just I, I'd never really thought about it I don't know why but like everything just looked so interesting so exciting you like I don't know you've got these like huge lever I'm gonna just talk about cyberpunk for carry on else. no I need to stop I'm everyone like, does this I'm everyone goes like, well, <laughs> everyone does this <laughs> everyone starts salivating oh, cyberpunk cyberpunk and they're like 
like I 20 minutes Sorry. later. Yeah. I, just, yeah. It, I mean, because they made The Witcher and because they did such a great job of that, they've been really cagey up until this point about what they were showing. Everything they showed at E3 and they said the right things and it looked right and it felt right. Normally I get, normally I'm quite good at working out whether a game's going to do well or not just through kind of like how they PR it and a little bit to do with the game itself as well. There's certain things you can kind of pick up on and this, there was no red flags whatsoever, like none. Mm. So mm. I, mean, I might have overhyped myself, okay. but we'll see. I would love to see an episode of that on the gaming show. If <sighs> not, I know you're going to be all over that as well and covering that game as it comes out. Oh my out. God, I'm just going to turn up whether they want me to or not. I'll be like banging yeah. on the doors. Let Hi. me in! Hi, it's just... the BBC! You promised me coverage! Took a wrong turn. I'm in Poland right now, so I just want to come check you guys. Uh-huh. Um, so you also stream as well, don't you, Julia? Let's talk yes. about the streaming. Would you like to stream? So um, I tend to do variety streaming, mainly because... I don't know. I don't like playing one game too much. I'll have like the games that I'm like really, really into, but I like to kind of mix things up. And certainly for Radio 1, if I like I review like a game a week, I need to kind of keep it quite fresh. So, um, yeah, I mainly just start the stream eating with my mouth and talking with my mouth full because I like snacking while I game. That's like one of the things that we end up doing is discussing what crisps everybody has. Recommendation for a top snack for when you're gaming? Oof, okay, um... Anything kind of crisp related. I'm a big fan of like Transformer snacks because it's not only a crisp, it's also a car. Do you build the Transformer snack? Just in case you're in the I States, mean, I don't know if they do them over there. It's it's basically snacks which you can build into car really... you've ever seen. Imagine the, wor- imagine the cheapest ever knockoff Transformer ever that's only got four wheels that's and a really bad body. made out of corn snack. Made out of corn chips. Yeah, basically. And you got to build it. And you got to build this. I don't know why it's... Wait, I mean, really think about that. What other crisps do you build things out of? It's so stupid. I think somebody was smoking serious amounts of weed and just went... <laughs> oh, yeah. Kids love cars. They looked at the Transformer and went... <laughs> Transformer snacks. <laughs> and then the rest I mean, of the boardroom were also smoking weed and went, let's do it. And they're I, selling. I think, you know what? If that was what it was like to work at somewhere that makes crisps, I feel like I've wasted my life doing this career. If they just sit around smoking weed, coming up with like ridiculous crisp ideas and eating crisps, that kind of sounds like the dream job, no? I find a lot of my stoner friends have the best (laughs) snack recommendations. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is an area of crisp creation that we are not aware of, the stoner room. Probably. An executive lounge where they sit in there and they just think up a... Think up flavors, crisp design, all that sort of thing. Wow, I feel like we've wasted our lives doing these other jobs. If these other jobs exist out there, maybe there's a whole different kind of level of job out there just for stoners and crisps. But you know what? Anyway. I reckon I reckon there's got to be someone, maybe, if you think about like some of the larger corporations where they've got like a bunch of different snacks, they must like test it on stoners. Because, like, I'm sure that's, like, their key market, like, 3 a.m. at a petrol station. Get all of them! Get I need something with wafers! Yeah, of course. There's a guy in the room who's doing the sales. He's like, right, so sales are up on this quarter for daytime purchasing, but we're finding our stoner section yes. from 3 a.m. on Saturday morning <laughs> all the way through to 3 a.m. on Sunday morning. There's been a drop in this, and we need to work out why. why? And somebody goes, I know. It's because you've not got this certain flavour. The stoner flavor, that's, that's what it is. It's got to be a stoner ingredient. Maybe it's just also, I think sometimes if they're really stoned, like really, really strong flavours upset them. Yeah. You know, like too much flavour. Like if they're really stoned, like a yeah. bit too much, they've t- just a touch too much out yeah. that kind of casual, exactly. like little realm. Yeah. And then it's too much flavour for them to handle, you know. Mm. Anyway, Transformer Snack, that is your, yep. st- I mean, that's your gaming, <laughs> your streaming <laughs> yeah. snack of choice. I mean, I'm I'm obsessed with crisps. Like, I'm obsessed with crisps. I will eat crisps all day, every day, if I could. Is that your favourite crisp, the Transformer Snack? What's your, what's your, like, what's your water? You know, like, everyone has a glass of water every day, but if you ask them what their favourite drink is, I don't mention it. What's the crisp that you just consume consistently? Uh, okay, if I could just eat any random crisp all day every day it's a toss up between mini poppadoms I do love a mini poppadom mini poppadom right or I've got quite into they brought out like these pitta chips which are like really crunchy almost cracker grade crisp that are, like have rosemary on them and they are amazing it's quite a refined crisp so you've gone from transformer eat- snack which is the ghetto crisp yeah all the way through to this quite fancy crisp I have many shades to my nature that's not a phrase <laughs> 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 uh, basically I'll just eat any crisps I just really like crisps what's your I'll, I'll give you my crisp my right. crisp 
Then you can rate this out of five. Is the pom bear? No, the pom bears are rubbish. <gasps> no, I'm sorry. Right. They are basically Plenty of ways to kill no, some time right. out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. Show's over. What? Pom bear are the, the crisp, a crisp equivalent, right, of Donald Trump's toupee. Right, they're barely there. If you waft your hand over them, they would dissipate into the ether. That's what I like about them. They're just like. <laughs> yeah, but they, they, I mean. They dissolve in your mouth, mm. but like too much. Not even like a prawn cocktail, like skips. At least skips give you like a couple of beats before they disappear <laughs> off, right? <laughs> Pombe, they've like disintegrated just through the moisture in your mouth just before they hit your tongue. Yeah, they're just like a tease of a crisp. It's like I the, love the, tease. the idea of a crisp that isn't even a crisp. That's the kind of crisp that I don't buy one bagger though. I've got, I've got, I don't buy one bag of. Yeah. I've got to buy the multi pack or I've got to buy a few big bags. That's because they're barely a crisp. They're mainly air. There's more air in a pom bear than there is crisp. I feel like I should do a whole podcast just about crisps. There is a podcast Julia about it. Julia getting angry talking yeah. about crisps. Crisp. Why is it like this? It's just, I'm trying to put some salsa on yeah. it. And now it's disintegrating. What kind of person makes what kind of crisp like this? this? Yeah. What kind of crisp is this? Oh, that's a podcast that's right a there. That's a podcast right there. If anyone steals that, Julia and I would like our 20%. What you got, Bill? We do have a, a podcast dedicated to crisps. That's true. That's true. We've got we've got a podcast. Yeah, we did have an episode of our pod with crisp eating in it, and we actually reviewed. It was kettle chips. It was yeah, kettle mm. chips, and we actually ate crisps for the whole episode and chewed throughout them. We will find a link to it and put it in the show description, and you can click on that. Amazing. And Maybe vom in your mouth a little bit because four people going. <laughs> I know. I, crisps. Maybe like, you like it. You honestly, my, it. my whole stream is the first half an hour is just kind of talking through the week, but I usually have like snacks as yeah. I do it. And it's just me just talking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it descended into this, but it did. Oh, yeah, your stream. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> what have you been streaming about recently? What have you been streaming? What did, oh, so uh, I played the update of No Man's Sky. Uh, wait, what day are we? Wednesday, Tuesday? Cool. Monday, whenever Monday was. Yeah. Then, uh, Dave, for the, yesterday. <laughs> It's cool, doesn't matter. I you know what? I, you know when you work weekends, I just I have no like, concept of time anymore. I don't understand the weeks and it, weekdays. If I didn't have a calendar on my phone or in no, my immediate vision, I would just yeah, it's a day. You know day, when day. like they used to write things up at school on like the boards. Yeah, like as soon as they stopped, that stopped happening in my life. That's when I just all went downhill. I still think it's nineteen ninety eight. I still think it's September the fifteenth. That's what I think. It what is. happened on September the fifteenth? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that's like a really pivotal moment. Oh, no, what, that, happened? No, um, what happened? Uh, what happened? What uh, happened? He's thinking uh, back. You know, this. wait, do look look into the distance again. Look. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> 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 so, No Man's Sky, this game that basically promised to change the, the way we game forever yeah, with just, infinite possibilities. It was like a multiverse of computer games. That's what it was. And then the reality was, I'm just on a really empty planet and there's nothing to do. I'm just on another empty planet and there's nothing to do. Wait, let's go to this planet Wait. over there. What about over here? Oh, no, there's that. nothing to do on that one either. No, that is the it's just yeah, empty. It's just, just empty over there. Yeah. What, what have we got with this update? So, um, yeah, it's blending the universes now and there's going to be more animals and things like that. To be honest with you, I played it for about two hours and I was still in the beginning bit because I forgot how to play it and I died. Oh quite a lot so I didn't really get the full experience I need to play it some more it's okay, a cool. really good like Sunday game if you want to like you know anything like too challenging you just okay. want something that's like a bit colourful and doesn't stress you out too much that's probably like a good good Sunday game this sounds like a stoner crispy yes would love this game yes the colours oh, the colours them colours man <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> okay cool if you're a stoner and you want a recommendation for a video <laughs> game get No Man's Sky because there's some cool colours <laughs> Cool and you're in space. Um, what did I play the week before? Uh, the Adventure Time game. That was quite fun. Um, I'm still trying to... The game I'm actually playing, playing is Detroit uh, Become Human. Although I keep making some terrible decisions that make me think that I'm actually a psychopath because, you know, you can go through the tree to look back and see what other people voted and did. And I've realised that I'm. I think I'm. I'm either a sociopath or a psychopath because I've made some decisions <laughs> that nobody else made. I've accidentally killed quite a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that you're laughing about it as well is quite questionable, Julie. No, I just. Julia. Well, some of it was the controls. You know right. when you, because it'll have like a quick, like a quick time event, and you know what you wanted to do. Okay, so this is my frustration with the game. 
it's very much more like if you haven't played it it's very much like an interactive movie the gameplay is quite light you have to sort of make uh, uh, conversation decisions or decisions like action decisions in the moment and it's all a little bit timed so it's quite gameplay light and then sometimes it will be confusing what I'm supposed to be doing and when you think like actually I'm not even really controlling a whole character doing a whole thing I've just got to make a very specific decision how are you getting this wrong explaining this to me because it's like the whole moment has stopped and you're just conveying me one piece of information and I still didn't really understand what you were trying anyway <laughs> so I've accidentally killed some people uh, right. I left the guy to die in a shootout wow I didn't mean to it just this action came up I was like quick get out oh no whoops I left him to die whoops so um, under pressure we know that you may I'm ter terrible may or may not terrible decisions have psychopathic may, just maybe yeah. um, no I think what's worrying me is that it's clear that it's coming <laughs> there's a bit in it where like you play a lot of different characters as you go through and there's a bit where you have to decide whether to effectively execute a uh, android to find out more information and I was just like wow I need to find out more information <laughs> shot it in the head and then it was like why did you do that and I was like actually that's kind of it's kind of harsh actually um so you I, got the information though yeah cool. I mean I went I think it was because the it's all about them becoming sentient and becoming woke effectively and this one wasn't it was just like a woman who was just around the house so I was like wow that's all right she's not awake yet Probably fine. I mean, she could wake up, but I don't know that. I, why did I do that? And then afterwards, I looked back and I was like, I don't like what this is bringing out in me. I had to stop. I was just like, <laughs> I think I'm like really worried about my own mental state right now. That I'm just like, I straight up shot someone who could theoretically be sentient in the face. To find in, the, out, in, the in the face to find out some information to further my investigation. And I was like, Julia, what are you doing? Why are you playing this game? I thought I was like a really nice person. Okay. But apparently, I'm evil. So I'm guessing we shouldn't be asking you to share your tree with us. No, <laughs> I don't think I want to share. And then everyone was kind of like, "Why? Didn't, you've been playing Detroit. Why didn't you stream that?" I was like, "No one needs to see this. I think I'm just going to keep this private." Oh, God, sick. Oh my God. Okay, What's cool. And where, where can we find your your channel on Twitch? Okay, so pretty much all of my socials are just at uh, It's Julia Hardy, as in ITS Julia Hardy, because there's some other Julia Hardy out there who's stolen everything. Like, silly cow, if she is. I don't know who she is. I'm just her. saying, you don't want to be uh, put on the spot when Julia has uh, the choice to shoot you in the face if you were the other Julia Hardy. I'm just saying, exactly. if she's in a rush, she'll make it happen. Yeah, um, I will just make some sort of like plausible <laughs> reason that you're not sentient yet. Oh, it's fine. She won't mind. She's not woke. <laughs> shoot her in the head. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is taken such a bit nervous. <laughs> so these kicks, I've got, before we get out of it, I've got, I've got to mention these red I mean, I would like you to describe these trainers to us, and because I've seen them once before E3, yeah, and I thought I would never see them again because the, they are very the exclusive. Okay, so these were sent to me by the lovely guys at Sega, and actually, there's two pairs, not just one pair. You so got both the fuck. Sorry, you got both the you got both the pairs. All right, I, no, got, go I got both the pairs. Right. Okay, so it's a Puma collaboration, and basically, they are uh, one is Doctor Robotnik. I know he's called Doctor Eggman, but no. It's nah. a stupid name, nah. and I didn't accept it back then, and I will not accept it now. So, Dr. Robotnik-style trainer. So, imagine, like, the glistening gloss red of Dr. Robotnik. His uh, round His round belly. Back. rotund belly. Yeah. Uh, and then it's also got some kind of, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's like when you have, like, in a... Uh, uh, like hazard. Hazard, yeah, hazard, like hazard, hazard tape. Type. Yeah, hazard tape, yeah. It's um, they're beautiful. They've got little rings on them. They've got blue soles that say Sonic the Hedgehog on them, and they are so comfortable. And then the Sonic ones are this kind of felty blue. They look like the Green Hill Zone if it was That's a trainer. Sick. They're really, really nice, and I'm so in love with them. Are these I'm actually for sale? Can we put a link on on in the description for the I listeners to have a look at these? And, I mean, and I cop. didn't, I didn't pay for them, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. All right. Well, we'll find out if you check if there's a link in the show description. Click on it. If there's a link that says this is not a link <laughs> for the trainers, <laughs> it will just link to the how to clean our website. Yeah, click it if you want anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're yeah, um, they're amazing. Favorite ones out the Sonic ones and the Doctor Robotnik ones. So I'm kind of in love with these ones to start with, but this is the first ones. I've, this is the first time I've worn them outside the house. 
So yeah, this is like fresh, fresh. They look fresh. fresh. And what, I hope you didn't do anything other than just like strolling them today. You're not like actually trying to run in them and stuff, are you? No. Okay. Cool. I have like set, I have other trainers for that. No, I really do, you, darling. I do. I have other trainers. <laughs> I have a whole selection of trainers for different moods. They are dope. They're dope. We'll take a picture of them and we'll put them on the Twitter and Instagram. I think you have to see them because they are. They're sick. I love man. it. You know they're what? Sick. Okay, so here's the thing, right? They've done um, limited edition trailers with other nerdy stuff before. When they did the original Ellen Ripley trainers, mm, mm. the Reeboks that mm-hmm. she has from Alien, they didn't make them in female sizes. So, so for the, the the trainers for a woman character in the movie, they didn't make them in women's sizes. The same thing with them, the Back to the Future ones. You couldn't up. get them in girl sizes. That's fucked up. Yeah, like messed up. And then they brought out, actually, they did... Um, they did actually do uh, another alien one, which was, it was, yeah, uh, the Xenom- one was Xenomorph and the other one was the uh, the loader thing. You know, I'm not into those trainers anyway. It's nothing personal. I just, I just don't think they should come over here, the Xenomorphs. I'm just saying, innit? <laughs> you know how I feel about those. Wow. Um, it's getting all a bit Britain firsty in here. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just saying. <laughs> but anyway, carry on. Uh, yeah, so they did two pairs. Uh, so one was like a Xenomorph colours and one was like the, what was it? The, not the freeloader. The freeloader. The um, uh, brain. You know, the, uh, the, the face hugger. No, no. The, 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 like what she gets into, the big yellow oh, machine. The, um, the, uh, the uh, mechanoid thing. Yeah, I know yeah, what you mean. Yeah. Uh, we're literally making crab hands in the studio right now. What the? I, why is my brain not working? The thing that she uses, the big yellow thing that she fights. The quick anyway, yeah. you you know you're all shouting at me and I can't remember it. Um, but yeah, so they did those trainers. But then even then, I think the smallest was like a UK six or something, and I'm like a weird four, possibly a three and a half. So it's good that you know. I mean, it would. Be, I don't think it would suit you to have like a size eleven foot. Though. Well, no, but like because you'd be like a giant L. I would be enjoying that. You're right. <laughs> You'd be able um, to do the moonwalker thing that Michael Jackson does when he leans forward because yeah. your feet are so big. Yeah. But now nah, four's a good size. But they just don't, like, they forget that girls are nerdy too and want cool nerdy things. 100%. I mean, there's one thing that Puma and, and Sega did wrong, though, at E3, but it was quite funny, is that in order to market these and kind of have something kooky going on and cool, yeah. they had that ring which was basically Sonic the Hedgehog can run so fast that he can run upside down. Right? Yeah, yeah. But they had this treadmill that you could run on and they could take pictures on and shout out to them. It was a great idea in the office. Yeah. But when you took it to E3, by the end of the first day, they had to, to turn, <laughs> they had to basically stop people going on this treadmill because yeah. people were running on it and going so fast that they were like <laughs> <laughs> falling over and spinning around. You know like when a hamster goes on its wheel oh, yeah, too quickly yeah, yeah. and spinning around. Like, woo, woo, so yeah, woo, woo. so like yeah. by day two, people were, pretty hurt they should have just got the trainers out and put them in glass boxes like they did and everyone would have been excited enough or they could have done something where i don't know like you know when if you have like a like those zorb things and you put like a little bit of water in them and you basically stay yeah. in the same point or like like there's cool, some yeah. way of doing it where it looks like it's going around but yeah or somebody dressed up like sonic the hedgehog somebody dressed up like dr robotnik there we go pictures I would yeah. have been happy I'd love a picture with Sonic that's one thing I've not got a picture with Sonic the Hedgehog really All the, never yeah, never uh, yeah. not even the real one I'd just like to punch Dr. Robotnik in his rotund stomach he caused me lots of angst growing <laughs> up that guy trying to drown a, me stressful trying to crush boss. me so, yeah trying to crush you that is not cool man so Sonic the Hedgehog drowning and being crushed all the other stuff i could deal with but you know that bit where it has the animation where it goes like Ooh, oh yeah. oh yeah oh god so, the noise when he drowns like deeply upsetting so a few episodes back i mentioned i can't i really struggle with lara croft doing that in tomb raider and yeah. i think the source of that is from sonic the hedgehog well, when the he drowning yeah there's something so horrid i mean in real life and in video games about drowning just awful it's mm. like just sounds like the worst thing ever yeah. but yeah the animation when sonic the hedgehog drowned where it's like oh, and he goes like oh and the little bubbles go <laughs> and his face and he just drops down the screen uh, that was upsetting as a child that was very, very upsetting that was very deep saying. yeah um, that. so julia one thing I've never asked you is like how did you get into the game like how did you end up where you are now was there like a pivotal moment a point or um, not do you want to know it's the most it's quite a long-winded um ridiculous story oh let's do it man okay all right i'll try <laughs> well Just this is going to take up the whole hour how to so, go some hours okay so the short-ish version <clears throat> i entered a playstation competition uh, and i had to vlog uh, for a summer there was four of us vlogging 
it was called the Summer of Freedom, and then whoever won like won like a bunch of money. Anyway, part of some of the vlogs that I did were just me and my hometown mates, like well dicking about basically because we came from we come from like this kind of small village that's been like consumed by greater london and there wasn't really anything to do apart from like punching each other and pushing each other into hedges and you know stealing shopping trolleys because there was literally nothing anyway. so some of these vlogs were just us like messing about i did this like fake show that was called mtv's behind the camera and we pretended that we were going uh, behind the scenes on the special effects of the fantastic four so it's basically me going into my dad's garage and my mate Paul uh, was pretending to be this guy who like made all the special effects happen called Smith Calacenze. Smith Calacenze. <laughs> we spent a lot of time going out with that name. Uh, and he had you know, like a cotton wool like moustache and beard. It was like so lo-fi, like pre-YouTube, terrible YouTube. And we were just like messing about. Anyway, so we made this video, but it was me kind of going like, hey, hi, welcome to Behind the Camera. And uh, anyway, this guy Paul ends up going to the doctor's surgery one day. This is how convoluted and pivotal and weird my life is. He went to the doctor's surgery one day. He met a guy in the waiting room who was setting up this, uh, this rock music channel. They were looking for female presenters. And because we'd made this weird little fake MTV show vlog together, he said, oh, my friend Julie would be really good at that. Gave this guy my number. I met him. I went to an audition. And that was my first presenting job. If he'd gone to the doctor's surgery an hour later, I would not have done what I do. I hope you took him out for a bit of food. Nah. <laughs> nah. nah. So this one video, this, like, you know, you said it's a it, poorly made video. It's so shoddy. Video. Well, I'd like to reveal to you... No, uh, <laughs> no, no. I, is it, is I it still, out there still? I, I, it's still out there. Okay. I've, got, I've got all of the videos from that, that summer. Um, it was actually like, it was funny, I was at a friend's wedding um, this weekend. And um, he actually played, um, he played uh, Flame, uh, no, he played the torch in the video and it was me pretending to douse him in petrol. It wasn't petrol, it was water, obviously, okay, cool, yeah. or whatever. And he was, he was talking about it last weekend. He's like, you still got those videos? I was like, it was this weird, magical summer where we actually had sort of like a vague purpose. Yeah. Um, and me and him, I dressed up as Batman for some of these videos he dressed up as robin and we like climbed on some roofs and we'd, like doing some weird stuff and like going around the local pubs and just trolling people and i don't know yeah it was, it was good times it was a really really good summer but yeah ultimately led to me doing this weird right sick like really pivotal yeah so like, how, how did you get from that channel to like the gaming environment because obviously ah, that's okay. an interest of yours so um the the rock channel that i was on uh the the crux of everything we did was they used to film live gigs. So they'd film all like the support acts, the main acts, stuff like that. And then I'd interview them all and then they'd package it up. And that was effectively what the, sh what the channel was. And they were like, oh, we want to do some different programming. And they were going to do this kind of review show that was more music based. And I said, oh, well, I'm really into film and games. Can we like, add that in? And they were like, yeah. So I took over like producing the whole show. And it was the first time I contacted anyone from video games and was like, hey, I'm doing this thing. Um, so then started reviewing stuff and started reviewing movies, started reviewing games. And then um, after the, the channel kind of got, it got bought up by like some American company and then just disappeared. And I went freelance for a little bit and did some various jobs. And then basically Sean saw like a random advert for a video games host for this show called Game Face that was going to go out on Bravo. Went and auditioned, got that job and then was hosting like a video game show on Bravo, which is all right. And then went from that, uh, we did another show on Challenge and then that was like a few years and then I went freelance and then... Just annoyed everyone at Radio 1 until they gave me a job. Nice. I think there needs to be more gaming on the radio. Like, I think there needs to be more of that. So I'm glad that there's more content out there. And on TV. Because it's 100%. like, everyone, everyone's a game. Everybody is a gamer. You know, like, when was the last time you ever just watched a TV show and you weren't on your phone? 100%. Like, nobody wants a completely passive experience anymore. Like, Twitter, Facebook, these are all games. You get points for saying clever things. Everyone wants to kind of gamify and, you know engage in life in these kind of bizarre ways because i mean that instagram is a game you get yeah. points points yeah. and prizes and little likes and whatever you know and you know you only have to go on the tube and just see that absolutely everyone and their mum plays games literally like yeah. we're supposed to play we are you know as humans it might not be a digital thing but we've always played we've always played games it's something that's so fundamental about who we are and i really really hope that you know with the sort of stuff that we're doing at the bbc that people's kind of perspective changes on it because it's such a rewarding pastime i would say it's more rewarding than sitting down and just binge watching a series i come out at the end of completing a game and i think like you know what i've done something with my day i mm. completed that game mm. i lost i died 
I overcame like huge odds and I did better. And you come away from it feeling quite good about yourself. Admittedly, you might be covered in crisps, but that's okay. And you may have realized that you would kill uh, that many you're a people. Psychopath. <laughs> but you know what? Video games can teach us lots of but things. You learned never, something. I learned you something. Took something. Yeah. I should never be trusted with any weaponry of any kind. Yeah. But that's a good thing to know. Yeah, it's I good mean, to know. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have known. I mean, that's great. I mean, we got the same sort of opinion here at How to Kill an Hour. Like, we talk to people about tech and they're like, oh, a tech show. Ooh, I'm not sure if I'm into tech. I'm like, you put your hand in your pocket. What have you got? And take out what you've got. Tech isn't even yeah. niche anymore. Yeah, this is like exactly. my argument. It's like, it's so fundamentally part of everybody's life. But it's this weird thing where, yeah, they still see that uh, tech's really nerdy or gaming's just for kind of losers in their bedrooms and blah, blah. It's, it's like, it's so not. It's the forefront of entertainment. You know, Grand Theft Auto V was the biggest selling en entertainment product of all time. Like, outsold Harry Potter, things like that. It's that. literally at the cutting edge of all CG, of all technology. It's only going to get more and more, you know, with things like AR and VR. I did this um, experience while I was out at San Diego Comic-Con. It was like this promo thing for this uh, new Jack Ryan TV show that they've got coming out. And it was basically a VR experience, like, in the field, but it was also kind of in real life at the same time. So basically you come out of this, you get sort of dropped out of this helicopter and you have to do like a zip wire um, and uh, like all this kind of different stuff. And actually what you see in VR is sort of a more ridiculous version of what's actually going on. So you're basically in this war-torn city. And <laughs> the first bit, you're kind of like lowered out of this helicopter. And actually if you watch it, it looks really rubbish. It looks really like, it just looks like there's some heavy weight being like slowly dropped down but what you see in the vr helmet you're basically dangling as this helicopter's flying over a city and there are explosions going on i was like oh my god crazy. you know there's a bit where um you've got to escape this building and you go actually down a zip wire but obviously there's like big explosions and you're being shot at and you go down this zip wire and then they chuck you in this like jeep that's a real jeep that sort of like looks a bit like a like right where it like bounces up and down but then you're like driving through the city and you know you know the car's spinning off and it's moving and it was honestly one of the best vr experiences i've ever had now imagine like and now i'm someone who works in games and if that blew my mind can you imagine what that's going to do for like the general public i mean imagine you're going to go to like uh, I don't know, instead of going away for like a spa weekend, you go to like a VR suite, you and your mates, and you have this like huge VR kind of blend of like in real life VR experience. You could you could experience what, anything. And it's not it's not like one of those rubbish 4D cinemas that makes you hate life. You're like, if this chair wiggles again or someone blows air in my face, I'm going to lose my shit. It's not like that. It's 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 this perfect you know perfect kind of synergy between like video games and real life and oh my god there was a bit where i had to walk bit on a plank between two buildings i lost my actual shit it was the bit the only bit i could hardly do because they actually had like a plank on the floor and i'm terrified of heights and i like my legs were shaking so much i could barely walk on the plank and oh. then i and then i looked at it later I, a picture of someone else's and it was literally like this yeah. plank flat on the floor and you were like, like oh, oh, my god. oh my god but then i got like halfway across and then it shoots off someone shoots like half of the plank and i'm like i know it's still there because th th i haven't actually shot it but like my legs are like freaking out it was amazing and if that it can give you that experience and for me someone who should know better um just imagine what it could do for everyone else do you know what we are big big fans of that kind of content and we're kind of when we're trying out new ways of killing time we're seeing more multiplayer vr we're seeing immersive experiences like that and i'm so happy that another person has just said this is sick and it's kind of this merging point between computer games and and sort of cinema i feel like where you're getting that yeah. kind of cinema i mean computer games have had cinema narrative for ages like that quality of, of content um no longer am i just walking down the streets from the left side of the screen to the right punching people up for streets of rage which i like doing yeah. but i'm getting a lot more value yeah. um but like we feel like as a show that in the future it's not going to be like are we going to go to the cinema it's like are we going to go and do this for example we did the star wars void experience, uh, oh, yeah, experience yeah. which is very very similar to that you know are we going to go out and do the star wars experience today are we going to go and do you know this do you think that's the definitely the direction of entertainment where that's going to go yeah absolutely because you think in the same way you know in the same way you know you're like i'll watch movies at home but if it's like a really really good movie that i want to see or something that's very action based i'll, I'll pay some money i'll go to the cinema in the same way, people might have VR at home or AR, like different things like that, but quite lo-fi. But for the best games, for the best experiences, I mean, you know, you'd go out to a place to experience that because 
I mean, geez, like, if it can make someone like completely terrified of heights, like they did a really similar thing of this plank walking between two, two buildings for, um, oh, what was the name of the um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt movie that was based on Philip Petit, you know, the guy who walked between the Twin Towers? Oh, I know what you mean. I, I can't remember the name of the film. They uh, had a documentary yeah. called Man on Wire, but it was the movie that, thing yeah, of like, the, the movie top, yeah. version of that. But the, f like for the promo, they did this thing where it's like you actually walked between, oh, like actually makes me feel slightly sick. But, Imagine that you like you're never going to do that. You're never going to have that experience in your life, but you can actually feel something of it. Imagine you know you're bedridden or you're unable to uh, walk. You can experience all those things, or maybe you've never been to Hawaii. You've never there's a million things that you've never been able to do. You can actually experience. God, it's basically just Total Recall. Total, I was, about, I was so just, close I'm just, to saying that. Talking about the plot of Total Recall. What's the what's the one thing that's the same every time you go away? You, you're the same. <laughs> Why did you try your like? What exactly? But that's what video yeah. games are. You're trying, you know, your little spy package. Shout out to Arnold Schwarzenegger for all of these films. Yes, right? He exactly. knows something we don't. He yeah. knew for a long time. Terminator as well. Oh god. Yeah. Uh, but that, that can't come true. Well, if it comes true, I know who I need. I need Julia <laughs> Hardy by my side. Lock and load it. I would just straight up shoot people, yeah, even though they didn't need to be Straight up. So, <laughs> so yeah. you've got my... Give me that cheese. <laughs> I, but I want it. It's the apocalypse. I want... Yeah. Right. So uh, we've spoken about the past. We've spoken about the present. What have we and got? And the terrifying future. <laughs> yeah, and the terrifying future. <laughs> Not in that future. Like, let's stay like within the next thousand years. What have we got right. coming up for you, Julia Hardy? Like, where do you want to be or where are we going to see you? Okay, so for me, dream, dream job, dream job would be to... Um, I've got an idea for... Uh, uh, a kind of really mainstream video game show that like anyone could actually watch like my mum could watch it that would be my dream to get that commissioned like okay. doing like a really big scale entertainment gaming show something that anyone could watch because it's all about com you know competitive play really that's the fundamentals of gaming and you could make something really fantastic out of that um i've got like a few little well, yeah pictures a bit like that kind of in the pipeline stuff that i'm pitching and kind of going out there so that's kind of like my back little project actually i've always got like eight different projects on the go but the kind of more like day-to-day -day stuff so um i'm going to be going to gamescom uh, we've got this ksi fight coming up um i'm going to be hosting minecon as well that'll be in i, don't know, I think it's october so that'll be in boston mm. um so yeah there's um there's like loads out there it's really fun working in games because there's always something different Oh yeah, different happening. Oh yeah, it's it's a buzzing environment, man. I look forward to. Uh, we're not going to Gamescom this year, so like we look forward to hearing about how amazing it yeah, is. Yeah, BBC, we're not. Um, gaming show's not going either. I'm going out for like a different a different job this year. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Right, yeah. we can still check you out on the socials. I'm sure you'll give us the lowdown. You'll let us know what it's like out there. You're quite active on the socials. Well, I do. I'm a little bit obsessed with Instagram stories, <laughs> and that's putting it mildly. <laughs> just mildly. Um, just gonna say. <laughs> There's a lot of content on the story. No, that's good though, man. Keep sharing it and don't stop when you're at Gamescom because we won't be there. So we want to get that Gamescom yeah. com experience. Smells and all. Yeah. Well, it gets see, very flavoursome over there. It does get flavoursome. See, my thing is with Instagram, I, like, I don't like a singular image to sum up my day because I feel like, well, that doesn't sum up my day. <laughs> and then I've gone like from Snapchat because it's just Snapchat's just like dead. 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 And so now I like it because it's disposable and it's kind of like there are so many, you know, yeah, everyone has a day that's kind of varies. There's lots of different facets. And yeah. I just feel that there's so much kind of fun stuff that I get to see and to do. And one picture just that just don't cut it, man. Yeah, 100 percent. 100%. But yeah, man, I, I love the hustle, Julian. I like the fact that we keep kind of crossing paths over the years and like we've we even worked on stuff that we've kind of never met each other yeah. on. So that's cool, man. But um, thank you very much for coming on How to Kill Now. Before I let you go, please share with the listener how they can see more. Well, we already know the Instagram. It's Julia Hardy. But uh, <laughs> that's basically. No, you just heard about it, yeah. anyway. Yeah. But, so um, that's that's yeah. all of my socials are exactly the same thing. So, like Twitch, uh, Instagram, yeah. um, Twitter, all that stuff is just at it's Julia Hardy. Yeah, make yeah. sure you check them out. The Instagram story, though, I, I believe there's no words that I can use to explain. Well, the the, just story. the level of my Instagram story. It's um, if you've got nothing to do for the next year, there's just, a lot of content. Just, just work, just work your way through a lot it. Of content. So, yeah. Lot of uh, but thanks for joining us here on How to Kill an Hour. Um, don't forget to check out howtokillanhour.com where you can see a picture of Julia Hardy's shoes. It's worth it. You need to go there because they are well worth it. Sick. Nuts. Uh, also, you can listen to all of our podcasts. Check out the videos that we put out, including us playing Overcooked Two as well. All I'm saying is, in a digital world, Julia and I are the same. 
pretty good chefs. Yeah, but, pretty good chefs. Uh, yeah. There were, there were some bumps along the way, which you can check out in the video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been Marcus Bronzy. And I've been Julia Hardy. This has been How to Kill an Hour. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. 